What uh, people didn't have until quite recently in, in the languages of mathematics is the distinction between value and function. In uh, classical semantics, a value and a function are basically equivalent because if you can compute the function, you have a value. And uh, if the function is sufficiently defined, you can compute it, right? And uh, for instance, there is no difference between pi as a function, as an algorithm that you would need to compute, and pi as a value in, in this classical semantics. But in practice, there is, right? You cannot determine uh, the arbitrary many digits of pi before Courier Sun burns out. There's a finite number of digits of pi that every observer in our universe will ever know. And uh, that also means that uh, there can be no system that uh, we can build or that something with similar um, limitations in this regard can ever build that relies on knowing the last digit of pi when it performs an operation. So if you use a code base that assumes that uh, some things in physics have known the last digit of pi before the universe uh, uh, went on to go into its next state, you are contradicting uh, this idea of constructive mathematics. And yeah. uh, the, the, there was some hope that this could be somehow recovered because mathematicians uh, before uh, this constructive turn uh, just postulated uh, this um, infinite number generator. So uh, yeah, so you postulate an, uh, your infinite number calculator, the thing that is able to perform infinitely many operations in a single step or read uh, infinitely many arguments into your function in a single step um, instead of infinitely many. And uh, if you assume that this is possible, for instance, via the axiom of choice, uh, you get nice properties, but some of them are very paradoxical. You probably know Hilbert's hotel, right? A hotel that has infinitely many rooms and is fully booked. And then a new person arrives and you just ask everybody to move, move one room to the right. And now you have an empty room. And uh, you can uh, also you have infinitely many buses come and you just ask everybody to roof, uh, move into the room that has twice its current number. And in practice, this is not going to work because in order to calculate twice your number, you need to store it somehow. And if the number gets too large, you are unable to do that. Uh, but uh, it should also occur to you that if you have such a thing as Hilbert's Hotel, that you're not looking at a feature, you're probably looking at a bug. You have just invented a cornucopia, you get something from nothing or you get more from little. And that should be concerning. And uh, so uh, when you look into this in detail, you get to Gödel's proof and to uh, the halting problem, which are both two different ways of looking at the issue that when you state that you can make a proof without actually being performing the algorithm of that proof, uh, you run into contradictions. Mm -hmm. It means you, ca uh, you cannot build a machine in mathematics that runs the uh, semantics of classical mathematics without crashing. That was Gödel's discovery. And it was a big shock to Gödel because he uh, strongly personally believed in the semantics of classical mathematics. And it's confusing to people like Penrose, who thinks that I can do classical mathematics. Computers cannot. So my mind must be able to do something that computers cannot do. right? And this is obviously not true. So what's going on here? I think what happens is that we are looking at too many parts to count. When you look at the world of too many parts to count that are very, very large numbers, you sometimes get dynamics that are convergent, right? That means that if you perform an operation uh, on a trillion objects or, or uh, on a billion objects in this domain, the result is somewhat similar. And uh, the domain where you have these operators and the, the way these operators converge, this is geometry by and large. And this is what we are using to describe the reality that we are embedded in because the reality that you and me are embedded in is uh, necessarily uh, composed of too many parts to count for us because we are very, very large with respect to our constituent parts because otherwise we wouldn't work.